Hi, I'm Nick Raines from Leica Academy Australia. Have you ever noticed that when you're shooting with a wide angle lens and you point it up, those buildings look like they're falling over backwards because all those vertical lines tend to recede like this to a point and the opposite is when you point the camera down and those lines tend to look like this. Well, the new Leica firmware for the M series cameras has a new tool which helps you correct that. When you point a wide angle lens on your camera at a subject with strong vertical lines, if you tilt the camera up, those vertical lines will tend to converge like this. And if you point the camera down, tilt it down, they tend to converge like this. It's called perspective distortion, and it's to do with the back of the camera facing the subject not being parallel to that vertical subject. And if you tilt the camera back like this, that perspective distortion gives you the effect of strong vertical lines converging as they go up the frame. Now, in this particular case behind me, if I was photographing this house across this gate, I need to be higher than the gate to look across the gate to the building. But by doing that, I have to tilt the camera down and I'm shooting with an 18 millimeter lens on an M10. So by tilting the lens down, it means that the bars in the gate are going to look like this, which is not what I want. I want to correct them to, do, to look like that. Now, of course, I can do that in Lightroom later, but the new M series firmware has this new tool built into it, which allows me not only to visualize how that adjustment is gonna be made, but it will also apply it in camera to the JPEG. Um, but also if I'm shooting raw files, then it will be applied to my Lightroom um, settings in the computer, but it doesn't remove the excess image, it doesn't crop the image like it would do with the JPEG. So I can see the adjustment that's been made, but it's not applied yet. And I'll show you that in a sec when we go back to the office. But right now, let me just show you what it looks like on the back of the camera. So what you should be able to see on the outside of the rear live view screen is this white box here, and you can see it's not a complete rectangle, it's, con it's diverging up like this, and that means that it's correcting for the fact that my camera is tilting down because this driveway is quite steep, and I'm actually looking down the slope towards the house. And as I move that around, you'll see, as I reframe it slightly, you'll see that box adjust itself based on the level information and the tilt information sensors in the camera itself. So it's not actually looking at the image, it's just taking the sensor data. And if I tilt the camera, you'll see how that square remains parallel to the subject, but not to the frame itself. So it adjusts itself as I move the camera. So if I frame my shot like that, you'll see that there's a little bit of space needs cropping off the edge here, which is really, really useful because it means we can anticipate the framing. And then when I shoot the picture, you'll see now the gate posts are now perfectly vertical. The gate is vertical, but I can still see over it to the house in the distance. So it works both ways. It works when I tilt the camera up as well. Should be able to see that go in the opposite direction and then like that. So yeah, that's a really, really neat way of visualizing how a perspective control um, adjustment is going to be applied to the shot later on. So let's get into Lightroom and just see how this image looks when we bring it into the computer as a raw file. Before we get into the perspective control on the M10, let's just do a bit of a recap about what perspective distortion looks like. Um, here's a couple of images I've selected, and this one of Shanghai is, is only subtle, but you can see quite clearly that because I'm shooting tilting down to get my horizon where I want it along there, uh, I don't want it. I didn't want the horizon too low in the shot, and if I'd shot with my camera completely horizontal, the horizon would be halfway down the actual image. But because I've tilted it down even slightly, and this is with a 29 millimeter lens, so reasonably wide, you can see clearly that this vertical on the left hand side where my mouse pointer is now, and this vertical to the right hand side where my mouse pointer is now, they are definitely receding downwards. So the buildings are wider at the top than at the bottom. Now this isn't necessarily a problem because that converging vertical converging downwards in this case, can actually give you a clue as to height, some sort of, it's a, it's a visual clue that you're looking down. And sometimes exaggerating that can give a really nice impression of height. So correcting everything to be perfect doesn't necessarily um, help 
the image be strong. It becomes a bit clinical, if that makes sense. So just be aware that sometimes having those lines not quite parallel can actually be quite effective. Now, uh, this shot here from Cologne in Germany, this is clearly not very acceptable. That building, or the, the church I should say, is leaning significantly backwards. And I shot this on a deluxe a while ago, and I wanted to get these statues, which are actually people pretending to be statues, and I wanted them at the bottom of the frame because I thought they added a nice bright um, point to the shot, but I wanted the church to loom over them. And it's certainly looming, but it's looming backwards, which is a bit weird. Now, of course, this is quite easy to change. If I go into the develop module and on the right hand side down here, we go to transform. It's very, very easy for me to use the guided transform tool. But I want to show you something slightly different just to give you an idea of what's happening in the M10 with this, con this perspective control tool. Because if I slide the vertical slider, it will rotate. Can you see what's happening now? It's taking the plane of the image and it's rotating it the top forwards and the bottom backwards. And if you look at the cropped area, which is the white area outside the frame, you'll see that it's shrinking the bottom edge of the picture. If I just let go now, it's shrinking from here to here and it's expanding at the top. So it's stretching the top to f make the whole thing square. That means that we're losing image. We're losing whatever will be outside the image here and here and we are losing what's here as well because what happens now is when I hit constrain crop on the right hand side, that will now crop that white area off and you can see quite clearly that we've lost quite a bit of the image because we've had to stretch the top so much and shrink the bottom so much to correct that perspective. If I go into the crop tool, it shows you quite clearly how much has been cropped off. And if I want to change this, sometimes it's a neat idea to bring the sides in and that then allows you to bring the bottom down because you can't crop into the white area without turning off the constrained crop tool. So now if I hit done, we've got a, a much more interesting image because the figures are in a better place in the frame and now the cathedral is looming hugely over the small figures. So that would be the way I would do it manually. Of course, now in the M10, I've got the option to do it automatically. Another shot here, same cathedral, just looking up. Now, in this particular case, I would argue that the, the leaning back perspective distortion actually works. It makes the whole thing look really tall. And I quite like the effect here. It's not too exaggerated. And for interiors, this is a church in Russia. Now, this one is both leaning backwards and tilted to the right slightly. And on the M10 with that perspective control facility, this would be corrected automatically. As it happens now, all I've got to do is use my guided upright tool and define this square by drawing the lines on the screen along things which we know should be either horizontal or vertical. So I'm just going to assume that that screen behind the altar there is supposed to be completely geometrically square. And by doing that, ping, it pulls it into position. But again, I do have to crop off parts of the, the picture, these white areas. So by hitting constrain crop on the right, we now have that image all nice and geometrically square, but the framing's wrong because this person here stood at the altar, his feet are really close to the edge of the frame. So I'll go back to the crop tool I'll pull in the sides just a little bit, which allows me to pull the bottom down further. I've got to pull the sides in to allow the bottom to come down further and I might pull the top down a bit just to make it a bit more evenly distributed and then double click that. And now we've got a nice geometrically correct image. And on the M10, it would be very, very easy to do this because it would basically do it in camera for you. So let's go to those shots that we did of the gate. Um, and I'll bring those up, there they are there, very simple, terrible photograph but it makes the point. And here's the DNG file of the last image and you can see it's corrected. This is the JPEG of the same image, it's ever so slightly different but only a, a tiny amount. But you'll see that they both have the gate post nice and vertical. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off those corrections 
and you'll see now this is the shot straight out of camera and I could now go and manually adjust this but if I just step back briefly in history you'll see that the camera has done a very very reasonable job of keeping those verticals vertical. Now to my eye this gate is not perfectly square. I suspect it's because I wasn't standing perfectly square to it in a left to right lateral sense. So what I can do of course now is go back to the original, choose my guided tool and then define the gate as being square because clearly it is square and I'll just drag a line along the vertical at the end and I'll use the gate post on this side which is also vertical and now we've got a slightly better result but only by a smidgen it's not such a big deal um, if I just go back to there you'll see it just shifts ever so slightly not quite exact that's because I was twisted slightly to the left rather than being square onto the gate because the perspective adjustment in the camera does not adjust for not being square onto the subject in the sense of being turned left or turned right. It only senses tilt up and tilt down and level, but it doesn't do the other perspectives. So you may have to go back and override that slightly. But as you could see, when we looked at the back of the camera, it gives me the final crop quite accurately. And that allows me to frame my subject so that there is room for cropping to correct the perspective. That's the key thing. The automatic adjustment of the image is not that critical to me because I don't shoot JPEGs and it only applies to the JPEGs. But having that frame which adapts itself to the tilt and the level of my shot means that I'm never going to frame an image too tightly to do a successful perspective shift later because the perspective shift combined with the crop is the key. And going back to some of those other images from before, here, this one here, you, you remember that I had to crop it quite considerably. There's the bit I've cropped out. And if I hadn't shot with enough room around the outside of the shot, I would never be able to get a decent correction to my shot. So the M10 now has a perspective correction tool built into the camera. Feel free to use it as you wish. Personally, I found it extremely useful and the wider angle of the lens you use, the more useful you will find it.